And now to the six shortlisted nominees for this year's prestigious German Book Prize. In two weeks, to kick off the Frankfurt Book Fair, the best German novel of the year will be announced. Six authors have been shortlisted. Travel now with us through literary Germany to meet the six finalists for the 2011 German Book Prize. Gegen die Welt or Against the World by Jan Brandt. What happens when a UFO lands in a cornfield? In his debut novel, Against the World, Jan Brandt describes what it was like to grow up in provincial West Germany in the 1980s. His young hero, Daniel Kupa, tries to escape from the rural idyll. Daniel, was machst du denn hier? Daniel, what are you doing here? Ich will dabei I sein, want to be there when Jericho falls, falls before I disappear ich forever. His novel is set in the fictional village of Jericho in East Frisia. Jan Brandt grew up in East Frisia, and it's here that his hero Daniel becomes an alien, because in his imagination, he dreams himself out of the village. Everyone in the book, every main character, has some sort of longing to get away or to change something. And that will only happen if they really break free, but not everyone succeeds. Jan Brandt describes the stasis of the 1980s. Until the Berlin Wall fell, nobody in West Germany believed their life of affluence could possibly change. The young people in the book find themselves in a sort of fundamental opposition. They rebel against their parents, against their teachers, against their classmates, and also among themselves. And of course, then there's the motif of the alien, the outsider basically, who also has this fantasy of destroying the whole world, kind of the radicalization of youth. Why was he going to school? What for? Himself? For his parents? For life? He didn't know. All at once, the world goes haywire. After Daniel starts believing he's met aliens in the cornfield, he's considered a freak. And he's held accountable for everything that goes wrong. I think the villagers are frightened of outsiders, of what's different or unpredictable, of whatever they can't control. In Against the World, Jan Brandt shows us that the seemingly perfect world of the former West Germany was in reality full of dark shadows. But what was right and what was wrong? Who determined that? Who verified it? Wer prüfte das nach? Wohnsiedel by Michael Buselmeier. Even though many years have passed, the town of Wohnsiedel is still strangely familiar to Michael Buselmeier. In 1964, he spent a summer in the northern Bavarian town. His novel, which bears its name, is like a time travel into the region's past. The town is even bleaker than it used to be, but the countryside is still beautiful. Back then, when I was young, I couldn't really see it because I was so unhappy and so fixated on my art. Buzelmeyer's alter ego is an ambitious actor. His very first job takes him to a small-time open-air stage, and his noble ideals are shattered. His stage version of a classic is turned into a cheap mass spectacle. As the days and weeks went by, the production of Götz und Berlichingen got even flatter and cruder than it already was. It also got shorter because the actors delivered their lines faster and performed mechanically so they could get to the pub sooner, or because when there was a sudden shower, for instance, entire scenes were just cut. My original seven lines were reduced step by step. A tragedy for a young artist's soul. And yet in this book, the hinterland becomes a point of departure, a rehearsal for real life. I was probably an unbearable character myself when I was young. I flaunted my self-assurance as a man of letters. Now that I'm old, I can be ironic about my previous self and circumstances. 
In his book, Michael Buselmeyer looks back at his own past, but writes about today, about the feeling of being at home in a particular place. Das Mädchen or The Girl by Angelika Klüssendorf. She can feel her heartbeat in her throat. She closes her eyes. All she really wants is to get away. And sometimes she succeeds. Angelika Klüssendorf's heroine is living a nightmare. The girl grows up in constant fear of being beaten by her mother. Klüssendorf has written a novel about a childhood devoid of hope. She loves this mother because she has no other choice, because she needs someone to love in the world, because there are also moments when her mother is kinder to her, and because she sees that all children love their mothers. The nameless girl lives with her mother and brother in a town in eastern Germany. The children are simply to function. Angelika Klissendorf describes how the girl tries to win her mother's approval. She wishes she had a different mother. For a long time, she thinks she's a changeling, but the thought doesn't help her. At night, she dreams about a monster that wants to kill her. And as she finally manages to open the window and call for help, a heavy storm begins, drowning out her cries. The girl only feels safe when she escapes into the world of fairy tales. Angelika Klüssendorf spells out how violence is passed on within families. When the girl grows older, she too will become violent with anyone who shows weakness. She's both. She's, both. she's a victim and then she's a perpetrator. I don't think you can separate the two. I think you're always a perpetrator even if you're a victim. She doesn't want to be this way. She disgusts herself. A raw fury seems to rage within her, an anger that reminds her of a wild, dangerous animal. Angelika Klüssendorf's The Girl is a powerful literary work. Of course I think what I've written is extreme, but that's life. Blumenberg by Zibylle Levitscherov. Zabila Levitcherov could have capitulated or been awestruck in the face of so much philosophical power, but no, she dared to write about a great philosopher humorously. Hans Blumenberg is the only philosopher I've read and reread over the years. I can't say that about anyone else. That means he made a real impression on me, but that's not enough for a novel. What tantalized me as a novelist was his eccentric nightlife. In the still of the night, suddenly a lion appears, lying serenely in Blumenberg's study. Is it a hallucination or alternative reality? The philosopher begins to doubt his own sanity. Of course he wasn't afraid of it. It didn't look like an escaped circus lion. For one thing, Blumenberg was protected by the large, heavy desk behind which he sat. For another, this lion quietly lay there and didn't act at all like a nervous devourer of Christians. Blumenberg had a desire to say, I'm a Catholic, you can eat me if you want to. While the lion steadily fuels his misgivings, Blumenberg spends his days surrounded by students who adore him unconditionally. All of them philosophy groupies. It depicts a particular time. In 1982, I was in the final throes of my own studies. So I also wanted to describe what university life was like then, and especially how people were taught by a distinguished luminary and how distinguished luminaries were surrounded by all sorts of loonies. In contrast, Zibylle Levitscherov keeps a respectful distance between herself and Blumenberg and shows just how exciting an adventure of thought can be. In Zeiten des Abnehmenden Lichts or In Times of Fading Light by Eugen Ruge. It begins with a longing, the wish to return from exile in Mexico. 
It's 1952 and German communists Wilhelm and Charlotte can finally travel to the newly established East Germany with Moscow's blessings, so they can help build a better Germany. Their story is the debut novel by playwright Eugen Ruge. Using various viewpoints and jumps in time, he creates an East German saga that spans generations. But in times of fading light is also a novel about a family whose members show a great resemblance to Ruge's own. By resurrecting them, so to speak, even if in a different form, they become a bit of this world that I'm preserving for myself and, of course, for others. By telling others about it. It's the world of Wilhelm and Charlotte. They belong to the founding generation of communist East Germany and remain stalwart Stalinists to the very last. And it's the world of their son Kurt, a historian who follows the party line even though under Stalin he'd been deported to a gulag. The respectable facade is a lie. His son Alexander, in contrast, struggles with everything and makes a clean break. First, he plunges into the dissident scene in Berlin's Prenzlauer Berg district, then he flees the country. All of them get a chance to tell their stories in this book. His head was empty. The only thing in his head was the murmur of the bathwater. In the murmur of the bathwater, there was a melody. It was a melody he knew, a sort of battle song that saddened him. The basic tone of this novel, which tells of the failure of a grand social design, is melancholic yet serene. In a way, it's a novel about the fall of communism without the turning point. That's the label I'd put on it. In Times of Fading Light is a story about communist East Germany that completely avoids clichés. Die Schmerzmacherin, or The Hurtress by Marlene Streerowitz. Her mother didn't want her. She doesn't know her father. In Amy's life, nothing is certain. And she, of all people, works for a private security service. Marlene Streerowitz's new novel is disguised as a thriller. A young woman falls into the clutches of a paramilitary security company. At a training camp for missions in crisis regions, Amy learns how to inflict pain on other people. Damage in the ears, there especially. In the ears which don't hear anything here. In the silence. What a pleasure to destroy hearing in such silence. She was calm again. Austrian writer Marlene Streerowitz lives in Vienna, London, Berlin and New York. She spent three years doing research before she began writing The Hurtress, interviewing former agents who sold their knowledge to private agencies after the Cold War ended. What happens to a military that was supposed to defend something for 60 years and then is dissolved within six months, for instance? Things like that interest me. What happens after the disaster? What happens after the dissolution? What happens when the state privatizes security? Everything spirals out of control and becomes a disaster for Amy. She's raped. She has a miscarriage. She can only guess at who's behind all the horror. Terrorist attacks, nuclear meltdown, conspiracies. This book is packed with global politics. We realize how complex, how complicated, diverse, colorful and boring the world is. And that's in the book. And it's also evidence, the result of research. You shouldn't ask if it's too little or too much. I'm not someone from whom you could buy 100 grams of ham and say, I want 100 grams and not a gram more. You have to take the package or leave it. And that's fine with me. Because Marlene Streerowitz uses fragmented language, the reader can become just as lost as her main character is. The borders between reality and fantasy are blurred. It's quite possibly the most radical novel on the 2011 shortlist. And that was our reading tour, with stops in small villages, journeys into the past of the former East Germany, fantasy and horror trips. The six finalists for the German Book Prize show the diversity of storytelling and explore the possibilities of the German language at its finest. <laughs>